last this past Wednesday night, I was digging around these passages of scripture and I found some things by way of introduction. Now I preached the whole message Wednesday night, but I'm not gonna do that again. But I want to give you some things that I find about this woman when she was coming to Jesus. If you look in verse number 21 and 22, the Bible says that while Jesus was heading to Tyre and to Sidon, there came a woman from Canaan out of the same coast. Write this down if you would tonight, that she came to Jesus when it was inconvenient. I'm telling you, if you want to get to God, sometimes it will be inconvenient. This lady had left her home. She had left her home down. She had no words left her comfort zone to get to where Jesus is. A lot of times in my life, I can look back and say that the very touch and the presence and the power of God was around and on me when I was most uncomfortable, when I had got out of my comfort zone. But that's when I found mercy and grace to help in the time of need. You know, when this lady came to Jesus, it's when it was very inconvenient. Amen. It may have been inconvenient for you to get here tonight. But I'm glad when Jesus shows up, uh, and the thing will be all right. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when storms and troubles yeah. come our way, uh, it seems like Satan says, don't go to church, uh, don't go to the house of God, uh, but yet we go anyway. Uh, God seems to put an extra yeah. way in. He seems to put an extra way He seems like to touch his people in the morning. I'm glad I serve a God uh, that will be yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 Right, Went out of her way to meet Jesus, number Amen. two. Preach it, Come on. By way of introduction, not only did she go to Jesus when it was inconvenient, she went to Jesus in spite of her circumstances. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look what she said in verse number 22. She said, have mercy on me. Now, if you was here on Tuesday night, you found out what that word mercy meant. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe Brother Kevin Whitman hit, he hit the nail on the head when he said, when you cry for mercy, all you're doing is telling God that you're a low-down, sorry, rotten sinner. Amen. When you cry out for mercy, you're telling God that you're nothing and he's everything. Amen. When you cry out for mercy, you're saying, God, I can't handle this. I can't do it. But I know you can. Amen. God, I need your presence. I let sometimes when we come to God, it's in our circumstances. I know tonight that I'm not worthy. I know tonight that I'm not holy. My righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But I'm glad no matter my circumstances, I no matter where I stand, I'm glad that there's a blood that has washed away all the sins, and I can turn boldly to the throne of grace and get to God in the time of need. No matter the circumstances, and I, you want to get to Jesus, honey. Hold on, He's passing through. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, have mercy on me, O Lord. She said, my daughter is grievously vexed from the devil. You know what? She's got problems out the house. Her household's falling apart. I'm talking about she's in the midst of turmoil. She's in the midst of distress. It got so bad, she got tired of dialing one 800 Cleo. She got tired of going to the newspapers. She got tired of calling the side of the second floor. She said, if I can just get to this Jesus, I know he'll put my family. I know he'll put my home. He'll put my life in the in the midst of her uncircumstances. Number three, she came to Jesus in spite of criticism. Yes. Yeah. Watch what the Bible says. Verse 23, he answered her not a word. That's a good sign to leave me alone. Yeah. I don't know about you, but if I'm walking and you come up and you start asking me something and you want something from me and I don't respond to you, that's a clear answer. Get up. Get, you know, you know, leave me alone. I don't want you. Yeah. And, you know, what do they call that? The cold shoulder? <laughs> Just give them the cold shoulder. They'll finally leave you alone. That's what Jesus done. He answered her not a word. I'm going to tell you something. She worshipped him. She got to where he was in spite of the criticism. Watch this. The Bible says, and the disciples, and of all people, they came and besought him, saying, sin her away. I believe she's standing right there when they gave those bad, that bad news. I believe she's standing right in the presence of Jesus. And here's his disciples. Here's his followers. And they're screaming. They're shouting, send her away. Yeah. I'll tell you something. Yeah. Sometimes we'll get to Jesus and it won't be popular. Yeah. Old time religion's not popular. Yeah. Old time preaching's yeah. not popular. Yeah. Old time singing is not popular. Yeah. We've got new ways and new avenues and new ways around it. They just sometimes come to Jesus. It's not popular. No more. They say it's not popular to come to the altar. It's not popular to get on your knees. It's not popular to call upon God. I will say something. God honors somebody. That goes against popularity. That is supposed to get in the presence of God. Amen. 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 Went to heaven in spite of the criticism.
exorcism. She went to carry in spite of her circumstances. Yeah. And she went to Jesus in spite of her inconvenience. And that leads us up to our text verse tonight, verse number 23. The Bible says, But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. Here's my question tonight to you. Why did he not answer her? The God of the universe, the God of glory, why in the world did he not answer this lady? I thought if we call upon thee, he'll show us great and mighty things which we know us not. Isn't that what Jeremiah told us? This is the New Testament. Right? He doesn't even preach it, call upon thee, and I'll answer thee and show you great and mighty things. Why in the world did he answer this lady? And in our, in our text verse, if you'll look down in verse number 26, he told this woman, it's not me. He said, it's not good to take the children's bread. You know the children there, aren't you? That's the Jewish people. That's, right. That's the nation of Israel. Right. He yeah. said, it's not good that I take the bread and cast it to you dogs. I don't know about you or not. Somebody calls me a dog, it's fighting term. It's a real fighting ground. Matter of fact, I may not even talk to you again. You call me a dog. I mean, who in the world in their right mind wants to be called a stinking dog? I mean, I'm telling you, that's, probably, that's pretty low down. That's pretty sorry. And he told that lady, he said, I, you know what? It's not all I'm not going to answer you, but I want to remind you that you're nothing but a low down, sorry dog. Why did he call her a dog? Why did he not answer her? Let me give you this real quickly. The Bible says that this woman was a Seraphonician woman. And the word, she was a non-Jew, she was a Gentile. Amen. Jesus told in the word of God, in Matthew chapter number 10, verses 5 through 7. Let me read this. This is what he told his disciples. He said, these 12, these, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right. and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I tell you why Jesus was ignoring her. I tell you why he didn't want nothing to do to her. It's because he was sent not to the lost. It wasn't he was sent to her, but he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. The Bible says in John Amen. 7, 1, that he came unto his own. Amen. Amen. He didn't come looking for the Gentiles. Right. He didn't come looking for these mixed breed Samaritans. He only came for God's chosen people, the Jews. All right. Amen. She's a Seraphonician woman. She's a non-Jew. She's an outcast. Yeah. Let me say this real quickly. Yes, she is a lost sheep. Yes, she is lost sheep. But she is not of the house of Israel. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, 12. You don't have to turn there. The Apostle Paul said this to the Gentiles. Remember, in times past, ye were without Christ. Right, yeah. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel right. and strangers from the covenants of promise, yeah. having no hope yeah. and without God in the world. Yeah. You know this woman's situation? She's cut off from the blessings of God. Yeah. She's been cut off from the favors of God. Right. She's been cut off from heaven. And it's only because she is a non-Jew. All right. Tell me, buddy, she's in a bad, bad shape. Yes, sir. I read what Matthew Henry said. Matthew Henry said the Gentiles were looked upon by the Jews with great contempt. Matthew said they were called and they were counted as dogs. The Jews thought it not good that the Gentiles should share in the favors bestowed upon them. I'm telling you something. She is a dog. Right. She is unworthy. Right. She don't need to be at the feet of Jesus. Right. He's not sent to her time. Right. But our text verse, verse 27, she turns the tables around and says, Truth, Lord. Yes. In other words, she said, You're exactly right. right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. It, isn't, that, isn't that good that she didn't say, You better watch your mouth, but it's gone, <laughs> <my God. laughs> right. Aren't you glad she didn't go up in the face of God and say, You know what? You're wrong. How many times have we done that when she's answered us? Woo! God, you know, you don't really know what you're doing. You know, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> he said, I've never done that. Well, pray for the rest of us. <laughs> Jesus looked at her and says this. He said, you're nothing but a dog. And she said, you know what? 
on this side. Can I just read you a little bit of what Isaiah said? Thanks, come on, come on, brother. Isaiah 9, 6 says, Brother, what's the child born under what's the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Oh, yeah. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Counselor, yes. mighty God, the everlasting yes. Father, yes. and he's called the Prince of Peace. Yes. Isaiah reminded us in Isaiah 53, talking about him being baked, for he shall grow up before them as a tender plant, yes. and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. He don't have any memory. But aren't you glad he came? Oh, yeah. Aren't you glad he was better than glory? But praise God, he came by his power. He on his side. And praise God, he was best. Here on this earth, God brought out the bread of life. I like what the writer of Hebrews said about this baked bread. He'd been touched by the feeling of that. Right. You say, why do you live here 33 years? Because he won't know a thing he's going to go through. <laughs> Am I? He experienced right. everything. I'm glad to experience it a whole lot more. Hallelujah. <laughs> if I need him, he's there for me. Amen. He's, uh, Amen. he's been battered. And he's been baked. But this is where I want to deal with tonight. I'm trying to hurry. No, hurry free. The bread of God. Take it down and free. It wasn't just battered, it wasn't just baked, but the Bible says it was broke. Preach. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this precious bread. Amen. Right. <laughs> this holy bread. Right. This life-giving bread. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bible says that the bread of life entered into a garden called Gethsemane. <coughs> and the Bible calls it the oil press. Gethsemane means the oil press. For and the Bible says that Jesus went a little further in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, I pray that you let this cup pass from me. And what he was doing was he was being pressed by the overwhelming spiritual uh, problems that he was going through. He knew what it was to take upon him the sin of the world. And the Bible said that the bread of life was being pressed. In the Garden of Gethsemane. That's right. That bread was being pressed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he cried more earnestly, Father, let this cup pass from me. But God knew the will. Man, he knew what he left. He knew that there would be no hope. And that bread had laid there in the garden. And that bread was pressed. Pressed beyond measure. You know the story. Judas sold him out for 30 pieces of sinking silver. They come and got the body of Jesus. They come and arrested him in the garden. And the next place they took him was a place that was called Gabbatha. Three things happened there at Gabbatha. Number one, it's called the place of the pavement. There they broke out what they call the cat of nine tails. I don't know if anybody's ever studied it out. But it's a long wet leather wheel. And what they would do, it's got nine little pieces of leather. And inside that leather is bone and metal fag. And what they would do is they would take that cat of nine tails and they would... They would beat the bread of life. And what that was doing, it was ripping his flesh open. And every time those bones and those metal fragments were going into the body of Christ, and every time they were in the body of Christ, it was breaking him open. And the Bible said that his flesh had been literally ripped from his bones. They took the bread of life and they took it and they began to scourge him and they began to mock him and they began, they began to beat him. One by one, they're taking their fists and they're mocking and they're that they, they were tearing up the bread of life. And, and the Bible says in Psalms that some of them even gnashed upon him. Yes, right. I believe they came to Jesus and had said, Hey, Jesus, you said you're the bread of life. Let me take a bite. Mm -hmm. I believe they bit him. The Bible said they poured the beer from his face. And the Bible talks about how the bread of life, it was just, I'm talking about just shredded apart. Right. The bread was being broke. That's what happened. Yeah, amen. amen. They broke out the cat of nine tails. Number two, they broke out the crown of thorns. Uh, yeah. They didn't place it on his head. The Bible said they planted it there. Right, right. They put those thorns on his head, and those thorns entered the skull. Yeah. You know what was happening? He was getting broken down. It was breaking the body of Christ at Calvary. Then not only did he have the crown of thorns, and not only did he have the cat of nine tails, but then at Gabbatha they laid on him the cross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our theme. And it wasn't as pretty as this one up here, and it wasn't as light as that one up there either. No. They laid it on the darling sun. I'm talking about his back had been ravished. Yeah. You could see the insides of his body. You know what Isaiah said? He was marred more than any man. 
Amen. Matter of fact, he didn't look like a loaf anymore. That's right. That's right. You know what they done? They took the body of Christ and they turned him inside out. Yeah. And they laid that cross on Jesus' back. Right. And they marched him up Calvary's old rugged cross. Right. They marched him up Calvary's old rugged cross. Right. right. And they when they got to the hill, it wasn't over with. They got the body of Jesus and they began to pierce him in his right hand and they pierced him in his left hand. And and then they said, let him have his feet. And they took nails and they, they began to put nails through his feet. Nailed him to the cross. Good preaching, brother. Spread of life. Broken. Yes. Thank they you. tore my Jesus all apart. They ripped his body all apart. And I don't know, this, this, this just come to me while I sit here, you know, doing this little illustration, brother Jim. That thing's gotten like stronger in its smell since I've been playing with it. It's got a little bit stronger sense to it. It ain't no smell like bread, praise God. Didn't the Bible say that little old Mary got down at the feet of Jesus and she took an alabaster box? She anointed Jesus' feet and anointed his body. And I believe every time they came, he was smelling fragrant. Every time they put a nail to his hand, there was an odor that came up, a glorious odor, Amen. a precious odor, yeah. a righteous odor, a holy odor. And you know, they'll know they're breaking the body of Christ, but we'll tell you something a little bit, it's going to start smelling like bread in here. Come on. They literally took and they broke the body of Christ right. at Calvary. Yes. That bread was battered, it was baked, but it was broke. Now, can I run somewhere real quick before I finish? Preach, brother. Matthew chapter number 15, before the 4,000 were ever fed. That's in our text verse. Before the 4,000 ever got fed, the bread had to be broke. Right. right. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 14, one verse, one chapter back, before the 5,000 were fed, the bread had to be broke. Oh, yes. And Jesus was in the upper room in Luke 22, and he took the bread and said, this is my body. And you know what he done with it, Brother Jim, in front of them men? He, he broke, broke it. Right. Right. This is my body, which is broken. Yeah. Not once before we could ever accept it, y'all. Before we could ever grasp it. Yeah. Before we could ever get a hold of it. Yeah. It had to be broke. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be pierced. It had to be beat. Yeah. Before anything can ever take place. Now watch this. In our text verse, Jesus told her, He said, I'm not done. He said, It's not me to give this bread to you dogs. He said, This bread is to my people, my children. But you know what they've done with that bread, Brother Jim? The Jews turned their back on us, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't believe all that. John the Baptist came preaching the kingdom of heaven and they cut his head off. Right. Jesus Christ came preaching the kingdom of heaven to the Jew and they nailed him to an old rugged cross. Right, yeah. In the book of Acts, you'll find that there was an old man of God by the name of Stephen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm talking about after Pentecost, after the Holy Ghost came and he was preaching the kingdom of heaven. And you know what they done to Stephen? They stoned him. Amen. When they took and they killed John the Baptist, God said, that's strike one. When they took our Savior and they put him on the cross, God said, strike two. I preached the message that's a long road to church. Why did Jesus stand at the stoning of Stephen? You know why I believe he stood? Because he's ready to return. <laughs> yeah. I believe that Jesus looked down and said, if they accept this message, if they accept what's being preached by Stephen, I'm going to sit on David's throne. I'm going to set up my kingdom. I believe what Jesus stood up. That's his way to come back yeah. to this earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, Where does that leave us Gentile dogs? On our way to hell. Yeah. That leaves this whole group tonight in hell. Let me ask this question tonight. If there are any Jews in here, would you slip up your hand? Anybody in here tonight at all, Jew? Anybody at all? I didn't see no hands go up. No. We'd all be in hell. Amen. That's right. That's right. Every one of us would be in hell tonight. That's right. That's right. But when this bread was broken, <laughs> business began to pick up. When we look at our text first, this lady said, Listen, Lord, I know I'm a dog in verse number 27. 
She said, but I know that there's crumbs that'll fall from the master's table. Right. Here's my question to you tonight. Help, God. how can a dog get up to the table? Me and my wife, where's Brother Scott? Is he here tonight? Is he not here? We bought a little puppy from him. And he sits around the house, and we eat in the kitchen every once in a while. And you know what he does? <laughs> little, little, little piglet will come to the kitchen with us, and she'll sit there like this. <laughs> we hadn't gave her a steak. We hadn't gave her no bread. We just up there having ourselves a good old time. Here she is. <laughs> she can't get to where we're at. You know why? Brother Jim, I'm not eating with a dog. I'm not going to stick my dog in a chair and let it lick off the plate on my table. Amen. 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 Why, preacher? Because it's a dog. Amen. You say, then how in the world was we as Gentiles able to get to this broke bread? Acts chapter number 9. Oh, yeah. That's right. God knew that the message had been rejected, and there at the stoning of Stephen was a man by the name of Saul Parsh. <laughs> and old Saul was watching his heaven book. Yeah. Old Saul was watching. Yeah. Hey, Jesus, stood the right hand of the Father. And old Saul watched as Stephen said this. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And old Stephen, praise God. Yeah. As he revealed the glory, old Saul got into what we call Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. 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 Come on. Acts chapter number 9, the Bible said he was on his way to Damascus. He was putting Christians in jail. He was having men and women putting them in prison. He was hauling them off, getting rid of them, but he's doing God a favor. But just what happened in Acts chapter number 9, God reached down through his sovereign mercy and he raised up a broom. <laughs> you better believe it. Woo! You know what you're saying, preacher? The Apostle Paul said this in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. He said, I know I'm a Jew. And because of that, I'm going to make a bold statement. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Amen. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. Watch this now. To the Jew first. <laughs> circumcision of the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto his fathers. Watch what he said, verse 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Hey, talk about them dogs now. I'm getting too excited. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he said, rejoice ye Gentiles. That's verse number 10, chapter 15. I'm going to read it again. And again, he said to the dogs, yeah. Rejoice, ye shit down. That's right. Lord, hear them all, ye people. And again, Elias said, There shall be a root of the Jesse that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Bible says this, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, and believing that we may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You say, what happened, preacher? Well, after this bread got up resurrection morning, after it popped out of the oven, all the time. <laughs> Glory, <laughs> Glory. <laughs> after that bread come out of that oven Amen. at Easter Sunday morning, Woo. 72 hours later, I've been laid in the grave. Uh, you say, what happened? There was an old veil that was in the temple. Yeah. And guess what? It was... <laughs> 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 Woo. Yeah. We couldn't get to God. <laughs> we couldn't get to where it was. I go with old high priest. I let the devil say the bell was ripped. Yeah. Yeah. You know what 
myself out. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He said, Preach, I want you to prove that bread was for them Gentiles. Preach. Ephesians 2, 11, 13. Wherefore, remember that ye being time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by which they called circumcision made the flesh by hands. At that, that time you were without Christ. I remember that day. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Oh, yeah, they remember that. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Oh, yeah. Uh, that Sarah fit miserable, but she remembered that too. Yeah. Having no hope, she remembered that. She remembered she had, you know what? She went to Jesus, he didn't answer her. He said, you're nothing but a dog. She remembered when she had no hope. She remembered when she was without God in the world. Yeah. Thank God for verse 13. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But now in Christ Jesus, now, amen. Amen. ye, he said there's both dogs. I don't know what he was talking about. <laughs> hey, but now, you bunch of dogs who are sometimes a ball off are made now by the blood. Amen. I said by the blood. Amen. Thank God Woo. for the blood. Amen. Here's my question to you tonight. Who wants the crumbs? Amen. That's Come on. Who wants these crumbs tonight? That's oh, good. You don't have to turn there, but there's a little story in Luke 15 about the old prophet. Y'all remember him? <laughs> Watch what the old prophet oh, yeah. said in Luke 15, verse 17. The Bible said when he came to himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going to have perish with hunger. He said, I'm going to rise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven before thee, and I'm no worthy. Watch what the <laughs> He got in the presence of the yeah. Lord. After realizing he needed the bread. Yeah. And when he got back home where the bread was at, he said, I'm no more worthy to be called my son. I'm just a dog. Make me a hired servant. Give me the crumb. Give me the crumb. I want the crumb. Go. That's free. That's free. That's free. Give me the crumb, boy. That's right. That's good for Just like a real thing. <laughs> Give me the crumbs. I yes. just want the crumbs tonight. Yeah, man, man. I want y'all to come back to the piano and get ready to sing. I want to say this real quickly. When I think about these crumbs, sometimes when there's a lot of them, see, this is a crumb right here. Some of y'all in that row can't see it, but it's there. Amen. And, uh, these old crumbs, they're pretty much innumerable. You, you, you can't sit up here and count all of them. It takes you all night. There's just too many up here. And there's some you can't even see. That's right. But there's enough, I guarantee you, on this floor and on this table for everybody in this room. Oh, that's right. That's just one loaf. Oh, thank you, Lord. You say, how big is the Savior? He's a whole lot bigger than Walmart. Oh, no taste to see the Lord is good. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for he's good. Yeah. But see, the only way you can get to the crumbs, listen to me now, the only way you get these crumbs is on your knees. You know how I came to Jesus on the last Wednesday night of February of 1996 at 11 o'clock? Sister Ann, I got on my knees. Amen. And you know what I got? I went around and found me some crumbs. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Brother Jim, I wasn't worthy enough to sit at the table Come with on, these chosen brother. people. Come on, brother. But I got down there where those crumbs were. Thank you. Because them crumbs Thank turned you. my life around. Amen. Woo! <laughs> <Hey, hey, hey. laughs> them crumbs hey, gave me something worth living for. Hey. <laughs> these crumbs gave me something worth shouting about. Amen. Hey, hey. Just give me the cross. Amen. Just 
just give me the cross. If I can just give the cross. She said, Jesus, I know I'm a daughter. I know I'm not worthy to sit at the table. If you'll just let me have the cross, everything will be all right. Can I give you this last little thought? I will put you sit at the table. Every once in a while, there will be some crumbs to fall. And we'll get up and we'll go in there to the den. We'll be just sitting around fellowship with me and my wife. Here comes that old dog. I thought about it been in there for a little while, even though what we had drunk a little bit. But Mickey, it almost seemed like to me she comes in there with a smile on her face. <laughs> just as happy. Yeah. Can't believe that she just got through eating a four horse meal. Yeah. <laughs> she was blessed to get down there and eat myself. Amen. Amen. But you know what this woman said? You read your Bible. She said, let me, let me quote it. I don't want to just quote this verse. She said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs, even the crumbs, which fall from, watch, watch her terminology she uses. She said, from there. That, that means, and I, I, I barely graduated. That means ownership. Amen. Amen. straight dogs in. He's got his own. <laughs> Y'all can get this a minute. Those dogs belong to him. Amen. Amen. Right. And if those dogs are going to get fed and watch yeah. dogs right. taken care of, Amen. it'll be the master who does it. Yeah. And when they come to church on a Friday night looking for a blessing, it's the master who's going to bless his dogs. Amen. She said, I know I'm just getting the crumbs. I'm just glad I belong to the master. Hey, that's right. I'm gonna tell you something. No doubt the crowd this uh, no doubt the crowd this large. There's some people here tonight that's never tasted the crumbs. You know why? Because you never come to the point of becoming a dog. Everybody wants Jesus. Everybody wants him. Tell them how good they are. Tell them what they've done. What they've accomplished. What they gave. And how good they've been. And all their works. Jesus said, "For my grace, are you saved by faith? It is the gift of God." You want this bread tonight, you're going to have to become a dog. I like watching sinners come down the aisle on their knees. Why is that, preacher? Because it's saying, have mercy on me. I'm nothing. You're everything. Sister Kyle Rowe wrote an old song. I believe had the touch of God on it. They're fixing to say it. Let me in. I want to see Jesus. Why? Somebody told me he is the way. Must stand together tonight with our heads bowed our eyes closed. All I want tonight is the grub. How many of you are up here tonight? Come get you some grub. No one could ever show me. Come on. The way. Just turn and close. 